have been magic and poker. So yes. it's cool to have something completely unrelated to gaming uh, sort of get a spotlight here because of Adam. And I love that, you know, it wasn't one of those things where he was just kind of on the show and it's like, okay, he made it to the audition, no, so that was it. Deep run. Yes, very, very deep run. Made it to the top eight for the guys' side before being eliminated. So if you've not seen that, I would definitely recommend that you do as we are underway here in round number one from Providence. Adam going to start off with an Opulent Palace. He is playing a Saltai Core deck this weekend, a Court of Calling deck with a lot of one-ofs to search for uh, across his Saltai build. Damian Yoder is his opponent and he's not messing around. He wants to give some beatdowns. And it looks as though Adam has kept a four card hand after mulliganing quite a bit. Has missed his second land drop and this one could be over quickly. Well, Red does not waste very much time as here is a Magma Jet from Yoder. That'll go upstairs. A little scry action. Prowess as well thanks to the Swift Spear. And game number one could be over before we do know it. Mono Red Aggro. Not much of a surprise to see this I think we're going to see a healthy amount of this. And there are various forms you can go with this deck, too. As you mentioned, there are so many different cards you can play. Magma Jet, one of the cards that's oftentimes not even seen in that deck. Exactly. You associate Magma Jet more with some decks like red-white aggro, like red devotion strategies, decks that are trying to go a little bit higher up on the curve. Uh, atypical to see in a low-end mono-red aggro list where it's not the most efficient mana for damage rate. As Galen does draw and play a Yavimaya Coast for the turn, we'll see if that allows him to play anything maybe on Yoder's turn. A third land there for Damien is a mountain. Looks like we have another Swift Spear here. And the follow-up will be a Magma Jet to trigger Prowse and deal two points of damage. Adam looking at a Bile Blight in hand, but unable to cast it at this point. The mana, obviously a little all over the place when you're playing a three-color deck. And unfortunately for Adam, not a lot of his black source of mana come into play untapped. He has a lot of temples, as you would imagine. He's got, I would imagine, some number of polluted deltas. No, it does not appear to be the case. No so, at all. Wow. a couple swamps and some land of war waste. He's looking to draw a good one. It's an opulent palace. Enter the battlefield tap. That's what you said there. The black sources, most of them are going to enter the, enter the battlefield tap as that opulent palace did do. And of course, when you're playing a deck that is court of calling and bile blight, you're stretching the mana a little bit. Of course, you know, and, and you're trying to lean on these. Uh, lands like Opulent Palace to make sure you're able to get all your colored mana on time, but when you're mulliganing and stumbling a little bit, the fact that your lands are coming into play tapped uh, means you're going to die a good percentage of the time before you can get out from under situations like this. Lightning Berserker is going to be dashed in. There will be a little bit of pump action here. So it will be a healthy attack for what looks to be five points of damage there from Yoder. That will go back to Damien's hand as the Galen down to four. Draw a card to copy of Temple of Malady. So some scrying here for Adam. So he's trying to figure out if he can work his way back into this game. He'll leave that card on top and simply pass the turn back. Yoda will draw. We well, know he's got a Lightning Berserker over there. He's also got a full hand Zergo Bell Striker there as well. Now there is a copy of the old Scream Reach Brawler. Excuse me, Impact Tremors. I take it back. Impact Tremors. There will be a trigger here. Some of the newer cards from Dragon's Dark here having an effect. Impact Tremors was a card that I, I thought would be a great sideboard tool for Mono Red Aggro. Yep. Just another angle of attack for control matchups. There's a copy of Bio Blight. That'll take care of the Monastery Swift Spears. So that's not too bad. Frenzied Goblin was the other card there, played by Yoder before passing the turn Sweet. back. Sweet. You love that card. I do. Now we have, okay, a little Prophet of Crewfix action. All right. Adam might get to untap here. And he will. This is a card I wish saw more play. It's really fun, and it's a great card for theory crafting particular decks. It's hard to get all the pieces to add up to a powerful deck, but it's a card. Uh, it's a definitely a fun card to think about. Yeah. Lightning Berserkers, plural, will be dashed in, which means Impact Tremors will trigger each one. As the Galeon down to one, is there another creature to be played? There is. It's a Zergo Bell Striker. Impact Tremors will trigger, and that is game number one. It's going to go over to Damian Yoder. Mono Red Aggro, a different build of the deck, up a game here over Adam Azagalian playing Saltai Cord as we take a look at the sideboards here. I'm sure Adam's got some nice ones in there, given that he's kind of a crazy deck. Well, he's got three copies of Self Inflicted Wound, two Nissa World Wakers, a Nylea's Disciple, uh, Fade Axe God of Deception, an Arbor Colossus, a Hornet Nest, two copies of Disable Stroke, four copies of Thoughtseize. Little light uh, for this matchup, I would say. I think the Nylea is a pretty solid card here, the Arbor Colossus, and the Hornet Nest. Just cards that are good at blocking. Gaining life is what Adam's in the market for here. The rest of the sideboard I don't think adds very much. Yeah, the Ness is obviously fantastic against these decks. And we saw Hornet Ness in the Pro Tour play a big role against red decks. Oh, it's a, it's a great card. There's some red decks that have access to things like Heel Cutter. And Frenzy Goblin is in Damien's list. That helps a lot. But it is a problematic card for mono red lists. 
Other side of things here for Yoder, he does have a collateral damage. Three copies of Rending Volley, two Roast, two Scouring Sands, three copies of Searing Blood, three Wild Slash, and a Zergo Bell Striker. What do we like there? Not a lot. The one copy of Collateral Damage I think is fine to bring in against a deck that's probably packing a lot of removal post board. Uh, the rest of this, you know, you, what you saw out of Adam's deck implies that he's a high end deck, probably playing with a lot of instants. So things like Searing Blood just don't seem particularly good to me based on the cards you saw out of Adam's deck. So I, I would sideboard very light here. I, I wouldn't be too stunned if the Roast came in just as a, uh, you know, Adam's probably got big stuff. It's a lot of it's going to be on the ground, so that's fine. I think the one collateral damage is okay here, but I, I think Damien's going to be sideboarding pretty light as well. Well, these players look like they're happy with their configuration, so we will very quickly talk about the feature match area here with SCG Live, something you can join right now. Yeah, you can hop in and start chatting. If you're not a subscriber, you're in slow mode chat, which means you can only post once every two minutes. But with a subscription for only $4.99 a month, you get access to unlimited posting, plus custom emoticons and badges. Head over to twitch.tv slash SEG Live. Become a member of the feature match area right now. Bunch of custom emoticons, as mentioned. Myself, Patrick Mathias, our Jetpack Penguin, our Slow Play Turtle. More on the way. Look for those during our Season 2 Invitational. We'll have some new ones debuting for you guys. This is what we have right now, however. I have not seen them, also. It's a secret. We can't loop you in on everything. I know. All right? Twitch.tv. Or much. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out. Twitch.tv slash SCG Live, which is hopefully where you're watching right now. We do appreciate having you guys early this morning from Providence. Senator Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Ken Crocker on the sideboard, along with the rest of the SCG Live crew. We are here in Providence. At SCG Live, hashtag SCG P-R-O-V for your tweets all weekend long as we make it through nine rounds today, six tomorrow, along with, of course, a top eight, and eventually crown a champion, give away $5,000, 25 open series points, and invite to our season two invitational in Columbus, tied with the Origins Game Fair. A great show. I've been going to it since I was 15. Used to be the host of U.S. Nationals yes. back when that was an event. The Sideboard Team Challenge. The Amateur Championships. Amateur Championships, the No Pro Point Allowed Tournament. Yep. My, uh, I don't know, I think that was my first big tournament. My, my first big tournament was either the Amateur Championships or States one year. Yeah, it depends how you define big, because, you know, uh, my first big tournament wouldn't feel like a big tournament five years later. Sure. But certainly the Amateur Tournaments was one of the first big tournaments that a lot of my friends played in. And someone within, not my local store, but one of those stores around the area, got like third place in the amateur championships with blue white control mm -hmm. when i was growing up so he was a big deal oh yeah huge deal blue white control with blinding angel blinding angel and millstone mm -hmm. that is it that's game blinding angel now i don't think that'd be a very good card it would get killed a lot that's a shame really bunny angel is a pretty horrible design <laughs> you don't like that one very much pretty horrible design. No, i'm not a big fan you can't attack i think if you had two of them in play they stacked they went across like oh, multiple yeah. turns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not great. Horrible design. Lanamore Waste will start things off here for Azagalian. Yoder going to fire away with a Monastery Swift Spear. A good lesson in game design. There are some effects that are fine to happen once a game that are not fine to happen every single turn. One of those effects is your opponent can't attack. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> That's one of them. Noted. When I do move into the game design realm at some point, yeah. I will keep that in mind. Chase the Mind Sculptor. Unsummon and happening once in a game, that's fine. Unsummon every turn, not so much. Not great. Not, not great. great. An attack for one. The Zergo Bell Striker will be joining the party as well. We'll go back Adam's way. Does he have a third land to play? And it looks like the answer is no, so he'll have to pass the turn back over to Yoder. Yoder having mana difficulties himself, he only has one land, so... Now, he does have three copies of Magma Jets, so you have to imagine one of those Magma Jets will probably find another land with all the scrying. An ideal world, but it's got to be sooner rather than later, because if Adam hits his land drop, you know, you're seeing a hand with a lot of power, Hornets, and Corsair Crufix. Damien's going to be locked out of combat. Yeah, well, that, that, has a, down. that is the look of a man who just did not draw Do a land. Do you think he drew a land? No, probably you not. You don't think so? A lot of Magma Jets, a lot of copies of Impact Tremors in hand over there for Yoder. But he is having some real mana issues right now. Thankfully, he can keep attacking, and he will. Three points of damage will come across. And Adam's defenses may not provide a lot of help in the event that Damien does draw land number two because he's got a lot of burn and Adam's tools mostly block. The most important card that Adam has in hand right now is the Nylea's Disciple. He drew his one out of the sideboard, which means he's able to make his land drops. He's going to be able to stabilize the ground here, especially with a land coming off the top of his deck, and then Nylea's Disciple can pull him out of burn range altogether. Yeah, he had to take one to play the Courser that turn, but then he's able to find a land, that force, put it onto the battlefield, gain a life back. So it looks like he might be stabilizing right around 12 here, and Courser's going to play the role of a big roadblock right now. 
I think that Damian would be hard pressed to do very much this game, even if he had land number two right now, just because of the problems of Nylea's disciple creating for his hand that's all burn. But without hitting the land drop, uh, I think it's going to be really, really tough sledding. He's going to discard Magma Jet and just pass the turn back over to Adam. Opio Palace is the draw. Top card of the deck is a Reclamation Sage. Looks like it's time for another Courser, and it is. Teams up very well with the Opulent Palace that Azagalian does play. So trigger both Coursers, gain two life up to 14. Happy to pass the turn back. No interest in attacking, just getting those defenses set up. The order drawing another card. I have a feeling that one's not a land either. No, did, not, did not seem that way. Not appear. No. Appears to be a Mardu Scout. Card you're a big fan of, I know that. I am. Perforos God of the Forge will be discarded. Reclamation saves the draw, carry added on top of the deck. Court of Calling, Hornet Nest. Nalia's Disciple, just some of the options as now Adam is getting a little aggressive. Courses will come in. It's time to turn the corner. The follow-up is that Nalia's Disciple. Six life will be gained. Adam's back up to 20 where he started the game. Going to be a pretty tough one here for Yoder to win. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Tough read on if that was Mount. I had a feeling it wasn't, though. No. I had a feeling. Just a just, a, just an itch. Discarding, a, uh, discarding the Mardu Scout that we talked about last turn. Carry out of the draw, top card of the deck. Sidisi, Undead Vizier. Given the strength of Adam's hand, I think that even if Damien had land number two on turn two, this would have been a challenging game to win. I agree. Without hitting the second land drop, of course, it's, it's elementary here for Adam, but his hand was very, very strong this game once he got land number three. Adam going to keep right on attacking here. Looks like Swift Spear is going to jump in front of something. So a little damage will be saved, but some more damage will come through. The follow-up is Hornet Nest, which means that Yoder is probably never even going to get to attack now. There's carry added as well. Yoder will draw a card. Hello. All right. Thumbs up, firing back. Game time now. Impact Trimmers is how he's going to start things. Got to start somewhere. Well, Did the you? upside here is if Adam is able to gain life with his coursers and Damien is able to produce some holding outbursts, it's conceivable he could chump block his way out of this game. There's a world. Yeah, it's, it's at least worth playing. Plus, maybe you pick up some information with the courser reveals. Yep. So you might as well keep playing a couple now, turns. Yeah, this makes it a little rough. That he did see the Reclamation Sage earlier. Yes. But I don't mind playing it out against an opponent with Corsair in play because you just might pick up info. Yoder down to five. Azagelian at a healthy 22. This will probably be the last turn of the game that Damien sees. As he's looking over his hand and considering his options at this point. And none of them appear to be all that great. But I'm with you. If you can pick some information up before the game does end, thanks to Courser, I think you certainly take the opportunity to do that. Part of the problem here is Damien needs to chump block twice to get out of the next turn. And uh, I suppose he can. He cannot block with Zergo. No. Yeah. No. There's a Dragonfire. That's, that's the one thing he can't do. Right. So now he can chump block out of this turn if Adam has nothing, but it's still not a long-term long -term play here. Goblin Token's in the house. Thanks to Dragon Fodder. As the Galen will untap. Lamar will waste the draw. Top card of the deck, Temple of Mystery. Going to tap a little mana here. We'll see if Adam has some sort of removal spell or something sweet to court up. He's tapping a bunch of mana and some creatures, so it'll be a quarter calling. Looks like this is going to be for five. Maybe a little Doom Wakey Wake? There, are, there is one in the list, and it would be lethal. Ha ha! There is Doom Wake Giant. Bye bye Goblin Tokens. Zergo couldn't block anyway. Everybody's coming in. Top card of the deck here from Corsair. I think maybe Damien wants to see that. We'll see. Yeah. Yep, okay, we're okay. good to go here. Adam Elzegalian going to win game number two here over Damien Yoder. Saltai Court and Mono Red Acro will play a third game.
Though Damien, by pulling it out there, did get to see that Court of Calling was an Adam's deck, which is a small victory. Yes. I think in that spot, Adam probably could have just used DC and CDC for BioBlight. And that way he's not giving any new information away to Damien because the CDC was revealed to the Corsair and the BioBlight was shown game one. So there's a different path there for Adam to conceal a little bit of information. Now Damien's aware of Court of Calling. Yeah, assuming that, assuming that Adam had enough black mana to make that play, and he did have he did have carry added and a couple of copies of Opium Pals and a ladder always too. So yeah. yeah, it looks like he did have enough. Small potatoes, but yes. at least Damien knows that Court of Calling is in the deck now, which is valuable because uh, very few decks in standard play Court of Calling. It's the exception rather than the rule. Well, these players are going to shuffle up here for game number three. We will talk about SCG game night here very quickly. It is the month of April, which I think everyone knows, at least I've seen on Twitter, <laughs> everyone knows that this kitten is available. Yeah, this has been very popular if my Facebook feed is any indication. This is the kit for April. Every month we generate new pins and foils to give out your store. You can run game night however you want to, sanctioned or unsanctioned, just get players in your store for some fun and friendly magic any day of the week. Obviously too late to get set out for the April kit. We have the May kit coming down the pipeline as well. The bees. And Not a fan. Not a fan. Well, they are... They, I know that they are frightening for you, so yeah. it's a slightly different Just case. Not. Did you know yesterday in Washington? I saw this. Did you see this news story that there was a truck that tipped over on the highway that's not far from where I live mm -hmm. that spilled out 4 million bees? Yeah, which is a lot of them. That's a lot of those. And then I actually feel bad for the news reporter who had to go to the highway. Report on the 4 million bees. Report on site by the bees. But anyhow, this is the May kit. You want to get signed up. June kit as well here with the... Bunny, which I assume is giving out military orders, not 100% sure. In any case, rcgames.com slash game night. More information, get signed up for June. Bigger fan of the bunny. See, because if a truck of bunnies tipped over, no one would be in danger. It would be adorable. It would be absolutely <laughs> They'd go great. bounding into the woods and yeah. everyone would be very happy. I would love to go report that news story. Yep. What do you do if you're a news reporter? They say you have to be the one to go down the... No, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I quit. <laughs> a truck full of bees tipped over? Yes. First of all, I don't know the process by which you get a bunch of bees into a truck. <laughs> Neither do I. Why is it necessary? That that story begs more questions than it answers. It's true. Just, it's really true. Why do we need to transport four million bees somewhere? Yeah. Why do they need? To, why do they need to be moved? I just I just don't understand. How did that truck tip over? Yep. A lot, of, a lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot right. of questions. But seriously, if, if, if my boss came to me and they're just like, hey, big story, big yep. story. Big story. Got a great opportunity for you. Truck full of bees tipped over. I know you've been at the desk. You've been writing about stories you don't care about. We just had a big break, and it's yours yes, if it's, you want it. It's all if you, you want it. It's all you. Out on the interstate right now, there's a swarm of <laughs> millions of bees <laughs> tipped out of a truck, and we need someone to go down there and just see what's up. And we do not have a bee suit for you. Right. Just come as you are. Yeah. They're, just, they're already enveloping people's cars. <laughs> and They're making demands. I don't know. But we need someone to go out there. The details are vague. That's why we need a reporter. It looks like Adam is going to reluctantly keep his hand as we are underway here for game number three. It's a lightning berserker. That does not have haste. Oh, it's good. Unless he dashes right, it, yeah. which it does have haste. I take it back. Yep. Get you for one. Pass that turn back. There's a forest. Pass the turn back over to Yoder. Very aggressive to be dashing on turn one, uh, to say the least. Let's see what the follow-up is here. Maybe another, another, another dash action. Yes. Come on in. This will be an attack here for two as the alien down to 17. So he's net neutral on damage right now because he could have just cast it on turn one and then pumped twice on turn two. So. Uh, we'll see if there's a big play because right now it feels like he's just sort of down a Lightning Berserker in play. There's Impact Trimmer. So that would explain why he wants to go down this line. Sure. Trying to blunt, you know, the impact of blockers here and Sorcery Speed Removal by just getting Impact Trimmers into play. He's got a lot of dash in his deck, a lot of token generation. There's a Corsair. Top card. Tassiger. No land here for Adam. He's had some issues with lands in his deck. Yes. There's Perfro. So, so see, we're setting up for a hyper combo finish. This now. makes a lot of sense now, yes. what Damien did on the early turns. And this is bad news for Adam because he doesn't have a lot of ways to break this up. He's only got one Sultai Charm. 
and we know that he's got a reclamation stage as well. But enchantments are uh, much more stable for him, and, I mean Damien, than creatures. Especially now you see Adam, he's coming up the works a little bit. There's a Corsair, there's a carry added. You know he's got a lot of other blockers in his deck. You saw Temple of Malady reveal Court of Calling, put that to the bottom, Orborg's on top. Ezekiel going to come in with the Corsair. A little Morph Mania. Okay. Going to go check in here for some more. There's a Ruthless Ripper. Of course there is. And Well, it's a one-mana Death Touch creature to cord for. Okay. That's what I assume the rationale is. Good blocker. Is. Good yeah. blocker. Good. A nice thing to be able to get at instant speed with a cord, a cord on the cheap. Yep. No one's going to play around that. No. I promise you. Oh, my goodness. Look at Damien's hand this here. Is, this, this is, is a nice high. setup for Perforos and Impact Tremors. This is the hyper combo finish right now. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. That'll be nine, That's actually. That's a nine spot. Yeah. There are three goblins. It all makes sense now. Now I, now I know why Damien was taking it slow but steady early on. Yeah, it all makes a little more sense now. It's like, this early turn doesn't feel very efficient here. Adam's probably not going to kill your creature on turn one or be able to block, so why bother doing this? Now... It makes sense. Yeah, I like it. I like Magma Jetting. You can choose to go upstairs or kill the morph. If you're a little scared of what the morph may be, that's perfectly fine. Yep. I mean, I think I, I think with Adam tapped out, I just prefer dashing the lightning berserker. It's so much damage in the spot. It, it's, I think there's a couple. There's like a couple avenues. Adam's going to reveal the ruthless super to get, deal some damage here, of course. But you know, there's a couple avenues. You can just go upstairs with the jet, hold the berserker, so that you can do like jet for. Jet and Scry for more dash action. Yes. Well, the, the reason I think I would have preferred dashing this turn is it knocks Adam down to five. And then even if Adam is gaining life, you have two Magma Jets and your Berserker in your hand, plus five lands. So you're probably finishing off the game next turn. Sure. With that said, Scrying probably finds him more gas. So, you know, he's likely to generate a kill next turn regardless. Um, that said, either way, Davian plays this out. He's in great shape. I agree. And now there's a ton of pressure. That's why I was a little bit surprised to see Adam pass through the cord there, because I felt like cord for Reclamation Stage is one of his ways to try to get out of this a little bit. Could be a little helpful. I mean, Perforos is the big problem, and he doesn't really have an answer to that. And Urbor came down. That was a gambling up to nine. Bioblight's top card of the deck, thanks to Corsair. You can see Adam has some expensive cards in his hand, as he has an expensive deck. You've got Heroes, Downfall, Dragonlord, Salumgar, Hornet, Queen... I mean, this is the merit of the way that Damien's built the deck here. If he was all on the ground just trying to attack, Adam's hand wins this game very easily. He's already got good blockers to play, instant speed removal, uh, more quality creatures to come. But this sort of thing right now, he just can't interact with this effectively. He doesn't have enough enchantment removal, doesn't have enough life gain, and it looks like he's going to be pushed out of this game uh, in spite of having a pretty good set of defenses. Yeah. Yeah, some more creatures joining the party right now. Lightning Berserker, Scream Reach Brawler. Here come the beatdowns. I mean, this one's going deep. You don't see this one often. No. The Dash Gang's all here. I mean, <laughs> anyone with Dash in their text box is invited to this party. Yeah, in this deck, absolutely. <laughs> there are the blocks. Adam's got to be the one to make the move because it's lethal right now. Now, there's Murder Scut to take care of the Berserker. He's going to pay five mana. There's a Magma Jet to go upstairs. I believe that is going to do it. Damon Yoda's going to win this match here over Adam Azagalian. Two games to one. Mono Red Aggro, unique take, does take care of Saltai Cord. Impact Tremors, Porphyros, and then a bunch of creatures. Good enough. So this is a, a list I've kind of scribbled around in my own head a little bit, but I was never able to find a build that I liked quite a bit to really promote. Impact Tremors is a card that I like a lot in the sideboard for Mono Red List, mostly against matchups like Blue Black, where you just need another angle attack because they're overloading on removal and blockers post-board. Uh, that said, in the structure that Damien has here with just a bunch of Dash creatures and Perforos, you can see that he's capable of burning someone out. Uh, I mean, Adam basically got burned out of that game from 17 with a Corsair still in play. Yeah. Damien dealt very little damage inside of combat. He dealt one on turn one two on turn two, and then almost all the rest of it was dealt through Perforos, Impact Tremors, Token Generation, and Dash Creatures. An interesting take on Mono Red, but, some, you know, maybe it's interesting because, you know, it's just the 